Hello, I'm Dr. Greg Mineta, and this is a Society for Vascular Surgery briefing about thoracic outlet syndrome. Thoracic outlet syndrome, frequently termed TOS, is a complex and often controversial diagnosis. It can be classified into three broad categories, arterial, venous, and neurogenic. The level of controversy surrounding the diagnosis and treatment of TOS varies with the form of TOS under consideration. There are two variants of the arterial form of thoracic outlet syndrome. The first can be termed the arterial major form of thoracic outlet syndrome and is generally associated with a previous clavicular fracture or a cervical rib. A cervical rib is an additional rib present in the lower neck. In this form of thoracic outlet syndrome, the subclavian artery supplying blood to the arm emerges from the chest, arches into the base of the neck, and drapes over the cervical rib in the neck, or is impinged by excessive bone growth of the healed clavicular fracture. This may result in damage to the lining of the subclavian artery and or an aneurysm of the subclavian artery with accumulation of clot within the artery. The clot can accumulate to the point where the artery is occluded, or the clot may travel down the arm into the arteries of the forearm and hand with potential loss of fingers and even the entire hand due to occlusion of hand and forearm arteries. Treatment is well standardized and is always surgical with decompression of the thoracic outlet, removal of any associated cervical rib, and reconstruction of the artery. The second form of the arterial variety of thoracic outlet syndrome can be termed the so-called minor variant. In this form of thoracic outlet syndrome, the subclavian artery undergoes positional dependent compression usually between the clavicle and the first rib. In affected patients, moving the arms over the head can produce symptoms of numbness of the arm and hand. Numbness is secondary to relative ischemia of the extremity from compression of the artery with the positional maneuvers. The diagnosis can be confirmed in the non-invasive vascular laboratory by documenting decreased hand perfusion with the patient's arm in various positions. This form of thoracic outlet syndrome usually has no pathophysiologic significance and is not limb-threatening. It can be regarded as a congenital condition. Positional dependent compression of the subclavian artery is commonly present in many asymptomatic individuals. In itself, it is generally of no clinical importance. It is mainly an inconvenience and is treated only in selective individuals who have severe symptoms with various positions of the upper extremity. The second form of thoracic outlet syndrome is the venous variety. In this form of thoracic outlet syndrome, the subclavian axillary vein is compressed in the thoracic outlet, generally between the head of the clavicle and the first rib, about one centimeter prior to the junction of the internal jugular and subclavian veins. This can result in chronic damage to the vein at this level and thrombosis of the axillary subclavian vein with symptoms that vary from minimal to marked swelling of the arm and discomfort at rest and or with activity. Treatment is somewhat controversial and varies from anticoagulation only to dissolving of the clot, often in conjunction with surgical decompression of the thoracic outlet and reconstruction of the axillal subclavian vein with catheter-based or open surgical techniques. The third form of thoracic outlet syndrome is neurogenic thoracic outlet syndrome. Neurogenic thoracic outlet syndrome can be divided into two types. There is the so-called true neurogenic thoracic outlet syndrome. In this form of thoracic outlet syndrome, cords of the brachial plexus are thought to be compressed by fibrous bands within the thoracic outlet. There may be small associated cervical ribs. There are definite EMG and or nerve conduction study abnormalities involving primarily the ulnar nerve. Treatment is surgical decompression of the thoracic outlet, and untreated patients will develop atrophy of the hand and dysfunction of the hand. There are other individuals who have arm, hand, and shoulder symptoms that may be quite significant, but are not associated with documented abnormalities of the nerves on nerve conduction or EMG studies. Pain patterns may not correspond to known innervation patterns of the nerves of the brachial plexus. These individuals are also often thought to have neurogenic thoracic outlet syndrome. Unlike individuals who have true neurogenic thoracic outlet syndrome, these individuals untreated 
generally do not go on to have muscular atrophy of the hands, even if symptoms are quite pronounced. The precise pathophysiology of this condition is unknown, and there are no absolute confirmatory tests or tests that reliably predict long-term response to therapy. Treatment is very controversial and often region and physician dependent and varies from use of physical therapy to any of a number of surgical procedures designed to decompress the thoracic outlet and relieve possible pressure on the nerves of the brachial plexus. This briefing is made possible by a grant from Cook Medical. To learn more about vascular health, visit vascularweb.org.